This is the beginning of a fish sonar tutorial series. Please subscribe so you can keep up to date when these are posted. Now today I want to focus on settings while you're trolling and underway, specifically some of the advanced settings on your sonar so that you can get a better picture of what fish are there. Now there's some assumptions before we start. We're assuming that you have a correctly installed system, meaning the transducer is mounted correctly so you're not getting turbulence or air bubbles that can affect the return you're getting. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of noise and not be able to make use of your sonar for spotting fish when you're underway or moving at any speed above four to five knots. Now, a through hull mounted transducer is going to give you the cleanest shot of water and the best performance, especially if you're going to want to target marking fish at high speed. A correctly installed transit mount transducer can do fairly well, again, as long as it's mounted properly. The second assumption is, is that you're not getting electrical interference. Now, if you're getting that, you'll need to get that resolved beforehand. Otherwise, you're just going to get more noise, especially if that's getting the noise from the alternator or the ignition of your engine. As the engine increases in RPM, you're just going to get more noise. So this may require you to, to move the transducer cabling away from the other cables or even install a ferrite bead for filtering. Uh, that sometimes can help. It all depends on uh, what the source of the noise is. Now it's important to understand that your display is designed to display the vertical up and down component, the y-axis, and that shows your returns and your depths, and then the x-axis, that's the left and right, which is the time. Now the far right, that's the most recent time, that is now. On the left, that is history, what's happened in the past. Now the big question is how long in the past is that information on the left? Well that's all determined by your scroll speed. Now the faster the scroll speed, less time of history is displayed on the screen. The slower the scroll speed, well, the longer the history that's displayed. But this is the thing, you have to adjust the scroll speed based on what your speed of travel is. Well why? Well, look at this picture. Uh, let's say we're in a boat and we're moving 10 miles an hour to the right. We get a return of a fish that's on the bottom. Now, if we have our scroll speed set so that it only updates about once a second, guess what? That fish is long gone and behind the boat by the next time your display updates again. So that fish will only show up as a dot on the screen. And it's really hard to judge, was that a weed? debris? What was it that you got on that return? Or was that a fish? What was that? So this means that we need to increase the scroll rate, the speed, so that it's faster, so that we get more updates per second on the screen. So in order to do that, most displays will have an advanced setting tab that allows you to override the scroll speed, among other things. Now on Lowrance, this is found under your sonar menu, Advanced. And here you can select the scroll speed and increase this. Now if you're moving fast, let's say you're on a plane, then you'll want to crank this up all the way. If you're trolling fast, uh, let's say you're salmon fishing using 360 flashers or skateboard flashers and you're trolling at three miles an hour, then you'll want to increase this to maybe around three times normal. Um, <clears throat> on the other hand, if you're on anchor and you're fishing while on anchor, then you'll want to slow the scroll rate down, typically a third of normal. Now, why do you want to do this? Well, if the scroll speed is too fast while on anchor, then it will look like very long lines on the screen. Your fish will look like the Loch Ness Monster. And it's because it's updating a crazy amount of sonar returns and you and the fish are just not moving. So it's just going to show this long line there of this fish that's just sitting there. Now another setting that you can play around with is the ping speed. Now this is how fast the transducer is sending out pulses. The faster rate will achieve the most detail possible. Now some high-end models have this set at a fairly high rate already. Other models, if you turn it up too fast, it's too much information for your display to process. So your display could get laggy or not very responsive. So you have to play around with this a little bit. One caveat though, as the depth increases, you do not want to have a high ping rate. As the depth increases, 
Running high ping rate leads to interference. It's typically seen as vertical lines on your sonar. And what it is, the signal sent crashes with the return of the previous signal if the ping set too high. The general rule of thumb is to set the ping speed to match the scroll speed. That's usually a safe uh, configuration. Now there's one situation where you might want it increased if you are vertical jigging and using the A-scope, and I'll leave that for another tutorial. So now with the scroll rate cranked up and we're moving around 12 miles an hour, we'll see that our dots now are showing up more like fish now. And this is what I use when trying to scout out a new area or if I'm trying to target a school of fish while underway. Here's another example of going at a higher rate, around 25 miles an hour. I'm able to track the bottom and with the scroll rate turned all the way up, I'm able to see fish that are uh, in the water column. Now a lot of manufacturers like Lowrance have some pre-built modes and those modes are supposed to be preset for specific fishing conditions. Uh, there's a troll mode, shallow, deep, so on. The shallow is designed to limit depth. There's some special software that handles the processing and the screen updates too, but there's not really any information given in the manual what these modes do other than depth restrictions. Personally, I leave mine in general mode and I set my sonar settings on the fly depending on what I'm doing at the given time. Now, you can customize some of the settings. So if you're uh, trolling mode, you want to set the scroll speed to a specific setting and then leave general on the default, you can do that. You'll have to figure out a system that works for you. But next time you're out, try playing around with your settings. You're not gonna hurt anything and if you find that you wanna go back to the original default settings, then you can quickly and easily reset the mode that you're modifying. Please drop a note in the comments if you'd like more details or you have any questions, or if you have any suggestions too, I'd like to hear any feedback. But have fun out there, and we'll see you on the next tutorial.